We're, um, we're going to look at some more complicated uh, types of collision problems and some <coughs> concepts related to them. Um, you know, I wrote complex collisions up here. This isn't a different type of collision. There aren't any different principles at work than in simpler collisions. It's just that the problems are somewhat more complicated, uh, either because they could have two parts or are two-dimensional or deal with energy as well or, or something. Um, the first sort of complex example I'd like to look at is what's called the ballistic pendulum. And the ballistic pendulum is uh, something that is used to, to measure how fast bullets are moving. Uh, so what, what happens in the ballistic pendulum is that you have some kind of block here, made of wood, typically, uh, and it's hanging from like, the ceiling. And then a, a bullet, or something, is fired at it. And the bullet goes into the block and will you know embed itself inside the block at which point the block will then gain some velocity and move swing up to a higher position okay. so for this part when the bullet enters the block this is a collision and therefore, momentum is conserved. Over here, as the block swings upward, this, in this scenario, there are no non-conservative forces acting, or no non-conservative forces doing work. And therefore, for this part of the motion, energy is conserved. So this is a two-part problem. You apply conservation of momentum to the collision between the block and the bullet, and then you apply conservation of energy to the two swinging up to a particular height. A problem that you might see uh, using a ballistic pendulum is something like this. Say you have a 4.2 gram bullet, so you have a 4.2 gram bullet moving at 150 meters per second, and it hits a hanging wooden block that has mass 340 grams. The bullet embeds itself in the block. The question is, how high does the block swing? So as I said, for the bullet hitting the block, uh, momentum is conserved for this first part. So for the first part, we have mass of the bullet times velocity of the bullet. Uh, and that's all the initial momentum we have. After the collision, we have the bullet and the block moving together at some speed. So this is our equation for the first part. Uh, and then we can punch in our numbers. We got a 4.2 gram bullet, 150 meters per second. And then we've got mass of the bullet is 4.2 plus mass of the block, 340. And we can figure out its speed after the collision uh, by punching that in. By punching that in, we got 4.2 times 150 divided by 4.2 plus 340. So the velocity of the block and bullet together is 1.83, etc. Okay. Now that is the v, then that becomes the initial velocity of the second part of the motion, where it just swings up. And over this part of the motion, uh, energy is conserved. So down here we have some kinetic energy, and it turns into potential energy up here. So we know that uh, since there are no non-conservative forces acting, our delta Ke is equal to minus delta PE. So our one half, our mass is the combined mass of the two, that's 344.2. Uh, v final squared, uh, this V final becomes the V naught down here. Uh, and uh, But when we swing up here, our velocity is going to be zero for an instant. So our V final there is zero, so we have zero minus uh, the, where'd it go? Uh, 1.83 using the stored value squared. And our delta PE is mgh, so that's again 344.2 times 9.8 times our change in height, uh, whatever that may be. The masses cancel out, uh, so we don't have to worry about those. And we can take that 1.83 squared 
times 0.5 and divide by 9.8 to get that our change in height of the block is 0 0.1709 meters. Um, there are two types of collisions that uh, I want to talk about. That's elastic and inelastic collisions. Um, all the collisions that we've done so far have probably been inelastic. Uh, what this means, elastic collisions, kinetic energy is conserved. For inelastic collisions, kinetic energy is not conserved. Uh, keep in mind that in, in both of these, these cases, momentum is still conserved. Uh, people tend to you know, say elastic kinetic energy, say that kinetic energy is conserved in elastic collisions, and then forget that momentum is also uh, conserved. So, if <clears throat> and the only time a collision is going to be elastic is if the problem will specifically state that it is elastic. Uh, if it doesn't say anything, you just assume that it's inelastic, and that your momentum is the only thing that's conserved. Um, so. For, an in, for both kinds of collisions, we can always write our you know, conservation of energy equation, our m1 v1 naught plus m2 v2, oops, naught is equal to m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final. Uh, but then for, so this is for both, but then for elastic, we can also write the conservation of kinetic energy. We can say one half m1 v1 naught squared plus one half m2 v2 naught squared equals one half m1 v1 final squared plus one half m2 v2 final squared. So if both objects are moving, this becomes pretty complicated. You know, you plug in your values and probably you would have to solve this equation for some variable in terms of another variable and plug that into this equation which you could then throw in your calculator to solve but it would still be pretty complicated. Um, for a particular case uh, and that, that special case that we're going to look at is for when object 2 is at rest and for a head-on collision uh, because in this case the equation winds up being, uh, the, the algebra is a little bit messy, but the, the result is pretty uh, easy to use. So I'm going to run through that. So if object 2 is at rest, our equations reduce to this. We just get rid of object 2 from over here, and instead of writing v1 naught, I'm just going to write v naught to, to simplify things. And then the right sides of our equations remain the same.